Do you feel like you can wrap your head around this ADAS and calibration craziness? I mean, who is doing this stuff? Well, you need to know who's doing it. And you need to know that there are tools out there to help you do it for your shop specifically. And at a price point that is like a no brainer. So I got a question for you. What do these three things have in common? Technology, ADAS, calibration. Well, if you guess Frank Turlip, then ding, 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 you are right. Stay tuned because on today's podcast, we're talking with Frank and you're not going to want to miss it. Welcome to Body Bangin', your podcast for all things body. Auto body, that is. And now, introducing Body Bangin's host, Mickey Woods of Mickey Woods Marketing. Mickey is a former Auto Collision Center owner and is now a marketing and business development expert to shops across the globe. Hey, everybody. Our guest today is good old Frank Turlip. And if you are in the automotive industry, you know, you know, Frank, (laughs) Frank has been in the automotive industry for 7,532,000 years. (laughs) Oh God. Really Frank, how long have you been in the the Well, that's a great question. So my first foray into the collision industry was back in 1984. Wow. And that's when I built my first, I started to build my first software platform way back in 1984. Now, if you think about that, Mickey, that was before automated estimating. Think about right. that. Right. That's crazy. <laughs> can, uh, can many of us even, I, I don't even, I wasn't in the industry then. I can only imagine because that's, you know, that's where it comes from writing sheets. Well, yeah. Right. And, and, and way back then, I mean, towards the middle of late 80s, the only quote unquote automated system back then was the Auditex where you'd put the, the phone on the modem and then you'd use the plastic sheets to circle things. I wow. Mean, it was wow. And, and you know, that's when we started to go around to try to convince uh, repairers, look, you really need to use a computer. This is back in the 80s. Think about that. Wow. We got lots of funny looks during those days. <laughs> well, Frank, you have been an innovator because I came on the scene about 15 years ago and I learned about you very quickly because you've always been, as far as I know, you've been in the industry since I know, and you're always an innovator. You're always, it's you, you are a disruptor <laughs> as we are. You are a living disruptor as the collision industry just keeps going forward, doing the same old shit over and over and over. We got Frank Turlip coming on the scene. Like you guys, we got to do better. We got to think better. We got to think bigger. And every time I see you, last time I saw you was last February at Verifax. You had your table there. I think it was for Copilot. That was the last time we all got to get together, by the way. Yes, I know. (laughs) And you had a swarm of people around the table because for the most part, everybody's interested. They want to know what can we be doing? They want to keep up with the latest and greatest and be cutting edge and take advantage of things that help them be more efficient and more on top of things. But I think a lot of people, a lot of owners and managers are nervous to take on new technology because there's just the unknown factor of, and how do I actually make it work? And what does it look like? And, and so I'm sure part of what you run into is just a lot of education. Well, our industry, I mean, I'm going back again to the eighties. Our industry has historically been one that is technology adverse, right? Yes. Um, If you remember Mickey, it wasn't until, um, and I can't remember the exact year, but it wasn't until Allstate went to the marketplace and said, repairs, you got to use an estimating system mm. that before that, they really didn't take off. Yeah. And, and it's almost like the repairers don't want to invest in any technology unless they're told to, which is, which right. is a shame, by the way. Which yes. Is a shame. Yes. Agree. A hundred percent. So tell me what, because I know you had this big table and you're all, you're always coming up with the latest and greatest. And then I saw you um, on another webinar and you've got a lot of videos on LinkedIn and that kind of thing, but you have tools currently 
that shops are actively using. And I, I think some of them you're beta testing and you can tell me exactly, but there are tools now that we have that can really assist us with these highly advanced vehicles that are being manufactured that are plopping in the shop's lap and they're looking at them going, huh, what do I do with this thing? And I think well, you're yeah, solving I mean, those problems. I mean, if you think about it, Mickey, five years ago, um, you know, the, the typical vehicle was, there was really no, not much scanning. There was really not much technology per se that anybody paid attention to, even though there was some ADAS mm -hmm. technology out there today, out there back then. But today, uh, I think the number, I'm gonna guess the numbers, 75 or 76 million vehicles are on the road today with some type of ADAS. Wow. And if you start to look forward a couple, two, three years, let's just say this year there's going to be another 16 million vehicles sold and most will have ADAS. Another, you can just extrapolate yep. down the road. Right. You know, in another two or three years, you're going to have 125 million vehicles on the road with ADAS. And, yeah. and so when I, when I was with Aztec, and when we helped mm -hmm. develop their remote scanning and calibration platform, it became very apparent to me that um, there were gonna be some pretty major challenges to the shops. Mm -hmm. and, and so when we left, when I left Aztec, one thing that Aztec does, and I think AirPro does and many others, is anytime you do a service, you know, it says take a test drive. And so when I left Aztec, I'm like, wow, we're telling people to take test drives, but we're not telling them how to take test drives. Right, right. Right, I mean, so, you know, it was like, and, and taking a test drive today, and by the way, the new term for a test drive today is the dynamic systems verification. Um, but taking a test drive today isn't like it was in, in even the 90s mm -hmm. or the early 2000s, right? I remember when I was a, a technician way back in the 70s, um, you know, you do an alignment, you do a brake job and, and you take it for a test drive and you'd make sure the car went straight, the steering wheel was straight. When you pressed on the brake, it didn't pull left or right. Right, right. Today, in some cases, you know, there are vehicles with 20 different ADAS systems on it. And so before wow. you take that vehicle back to the, give that vehicle back to the consumer, um, it's probably a good thing to verify those ADAS systems operate as designed. For sure. So, that was our first foray, foray last year when you saw me at Verifax was our test drive co-pilot platform. Yes. Which, which again is specifically designed to help repairers properly perform. So what we do with that is we give the repairers the OEM based test drive procedures. Okay. And, and you can't find them anywhere else. In right. The place. And so, and then we record the audio, record the video, record the speed, the mileage, the time, we actually even create a map of where the vehicle is driven. Mm -hmm. So the, the owner actually knows that the test drive was taken in the proper route, you know, the proper left-hand turns, right-hand turns, and so on. So, so that was our first foray into what I would call ADAS, uh, ADAS system validation, calibration, and estimating, per se. Right. Now that system specifically, shops are using it now. I would Correct. assume that's Correct. been rolled out. So is it something that it's a software that they have? What do they have it on their phone? Does it plug into the vehicle itself? Great, great question. So it's, it's a combination of a, a SaaS software okay. platform, which for the, for the world means software as a service. It's on the web. But 90% of the work is done with their smartphone. Amazing. They take the smartphone, and I don't know if I have one here. Um, well, I think I do. Hold on. Yeah. Um, yeah, here we go. I'll just give you an example. So they sure. take one of these okay. and they put it in the windshield of the vehicle and then they put the phone and then the phone records uh, the test drive video and audio and so on. And that's okay. it. Okay. Wow. And so then all the information gets routed through the program on the phone. Correct. And then when, when they're done, they press stop, obviously. Yeah. And then the, the system automatically uploads the video and audio to the shop's own web portal, and then automatically generates a report that gets emailed to whomever in their business they think should get the report. And so now by having done that, they know that all systems have been checked according to what the manufacturer wants checked because it's already been uploaded into the co-pilot system. So they don't Correct. have to go through themselves and did we do this? Did we do that? It's just automated. 
Correct. And now they awesome. have documentation from a liability perspective. Yes. Right? So, I mean, these things happen. I mean, Mrs. Smith is in the drive in the diner and her car goes driving by it, with the, someone test driving the car. And Mrs. Smith shows up at the shop to pick up her car and goes, what were you guys doing in my car? Mm -hmm. And so there's documentation for that. Yes. Uh, obviously, there's documentation for reimbursement. Mm -hmm. um, and we have some shops not only using it for post repair, post calibration test drives, but we also have them tracking vehicle delivery, vehicle pickup, and actually sublet transportation, moving the vehicle uh, to a calibration center for calibrations. So wow. it, it's Great interesting idea. when you get when you get software in the marketplace, how it gets used differently than what you think. <laughs> it is, right? That's right. That's incredible. And for those that aren't watching this and listening to the podcast, what Frank was showing us was there's basically an arm with a suction on the end. So it sucks up to the front windshield. You stick your phone in there, right that guy right there, and your phone can visually look out via the camera on the phone. And it basically translates all the information that it's seeing through the phone, through the software on the phone for then you to have for the shop for all the purposes that you need. So incredible, excellent, excellent idea, an excellent job coming up with something because if there's a problem, there has to be a solution. And like you said, there's a problem because we don't even know what those rules are supposed to be like, what are we, the test, what is the test drive? Who well, knows? Well, so it's interesting you bring it up, right? So Vicki, when I first, we had the idea, I looked all over the world going, someone has to have created one of these already, right? <laughs> um, right. Because you always look to make sure that to see if there's A, if there's something else exists, yes. and then B, figure out if it does, what does it do, what does it not do? Well, it didn't yes. exist. And so wow. I went to my wife and I said, I think I want to build this. She goes, are you nuts? <laughs> Which, I mean, because she goes, it doesn't exist anywhere. I'm like, yeah, I know, but I think someone's going to need it. And if you think about it, Mickey, the shops never start started to think about test drives being a challenge. They just would go out and test drive the car. Because it wasn't a challenge. Right. But now right. it is. <laughs> That's amazing. Okay. So now tell me, what is the next software so, system? So, then, so, so that's test drive. So that I'll call yeah. that the, the final step in the process before you deliver the vehicle back to the customer. Right. Perfect. Um, so, but then um, the next thing that we looked at was okay, um, I spent 18 months on the SICA calibration committee. And SICA went through this entire process to define a proper calibration workflow. Mm. And, and so during that 18 months, um, I was also thinking about, okay, so if there's a proper workflow, how does that really gonna be managed and documented, et cetera, et cetera. Yes. So what our team did, um, once we got Test Drive Copilot in the marketplace, we looked at the SICA calibration workflow. And we said, again, nothing existed um, to help manage that calibration workflow. And we've built, and it's now in shops, a product called Calibration Copilot. And basically what it does, it allows a shop and a calibration or mobile provider mm. to do business seamlessly. Incredible. And, well, and because as we know, most shops aren't doing it themselves. So yeah, this I, bridges the gap. Yeah, and I, and I think, and again, this is my theory and I could be wrong. I just don't think a large percentage of repairers are going to end up doing their own calibrations. I, don't now, I can that. tell you that today, most of our customers today with Calibration Copilot are either a calibration provider mm -hmm. or an MSO that has created their own calibration business ah. to do calibrations for their own location. Yes, that makes sense. And, and so, so we see that that's probably the model mm -hmm. is because you gotta have a, you have to have a, a, a flat flat floor. You have to have space. Mm -hmm. And again, a lot of the shops don't have the space. You go to the Northeast and you don't have much space at all. Yeah. Um, and then if you need space, are you gonna give up a productive work bay to replace it with calibrations? Mm -hmm. Well, in today's world, calibrations is still new. And so you, you're, the, the business I don't think is, is really prepared to go out and do them on their on their own because of they don't have the technicians, they don't have the space, and they don't have the people. So yeah. well, and then they've got to be, train. Then I they got to go train be, somebody, and they have enough problems just managing the workflow that they already have. Right, 
And so we looked at it and said, okay, let's make it really simple for a repairer to order a calibration or other ADS related services. Mm -hmm. So in our workflow, with they're working in their CCC one platform, they can literally start the request right in their CCC one platform. Awesome. And so then that request gets processed. Uh, the, the repairer can actually see the pricing of the calibration provider mm -hmm. as they're going through the request. And we can actually even allow them to print out an estimate. So now one of the problems today, Mickey, is the, the shop doesn't know the price of a calibration till later in the process. And it causes a supplemental issue. Yes. So anyway, so we do that. And then that, that request gets sent and they can schedule, by the way, shop can schedule the calibration. And then that gets automatically shared with the calibration provider. Now, the okay. really cool thing about Calibration Copilot is the shop and the provider operate on the same platform. Yes, so, exactly. So, and so you don't have to worry about, well, I emailed you a report, you didn't get this <laughs> report. Um, anyway, so so the, the feedback on Calibration Copilot has been awesome. Um, complete time and date stamp on every action the calibration provider performs. Uh, you're able to upload images, video, scan reports, um, anything you need to do for documentation yeah. on that calibration. And then from the provider's perspective, we automatically generate the report and invoice so the provider doesn't really have to worry about going into their accounting system mm. and generating an invoice. Yes. For the so um, we think it's going to be, it's going to, we believe that by 2025, calibrations will probably be a billion dollar year business in our industry. Wow. Wow. Well, and I know we, I talk with a lot of shops that are frustrated with insurance, kicking a lot of things back with all this documentation and the photos and everything. It makes it would seem that it would make it very difficult for them to not allow that. And like you said, being able to charge for it upfront, because I know part of the issue with insurance now, specifically during COVID has been all these supplements that are coming yep. through because everybody's trying to write a bigger sheet. So it flat, you know, so everybody's getting flagged and they're totaling more vehicles where this kind of thing allows all of the costs or as much cost as possible to be front loaded rather than pushing it back out into the supplement. And then you got to fight for it. Right. And if you think about the, 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 the workflow in a shop, and most of the, the good ones today anyway, they're doing a repair plan on the vehicle, right? Mm -hmm. And that's the time where you should be putting everything into that repair plan, including your calibration of yeah. requirements. Um, and that's why we chose to allow that information to get to the shop early from the calibration provider. Well, and the fact that it works through CCC is like a no brainer. Well, yeah. And the other thing that's important too with the CCC integration, Mickey, is the shop can share the repair order lines with the calibration provider. So right. now the calibration provider knows what literally was done on that vehicle. So they know what to look for mm -hmm. in terms of the calibration that they're going to perform. It's, so it seems like it streamlines, streamlines the process even more versus me having to call you up to tell you the issues and this is what happened and then somebody else forgets. So they didn't check this or didn't do yep. that. Now it's all there. It's an open book. Both sides can see it. So when you get the vehicle back, I would imagine for safety and efficiency and everything, this is, this is the seamless solution. It appears it, to be. It really is seamless. And whatever the calibration provider does, the, the customer, the shop, has access to it immediately. And the other thing right. that we've built into it is a two-way chat platform. So Ooh. they don't have to pick up the phone anymore. They can chat back and forth uh, via the, the mobile app or the platform. And the other thing is we document that chat as well. Mm. Great. So, so we know what communications went back and forth. So we're really excited about that. But remember, yes. the calibration process today is relatively new. Yes. Right. It's relatively new. But again, we think 2025, a billion dollars. And we think by 2025, the industry is going to need at least 1,500 to 2,000 calibration centers. Wow. Well, they would have to in order to keep up with all the work because you can't just not calibrate. Well, well but that's what's happening. Uh, yeah. Or people are like, yeah, we calibrate. And you're like, how do I know this was even done properly? But that's when the 
that's when the test drive co-pilot comes in. Right. But right? The other thing, yeah. The other thing, and I'm sure a lot of your, your listeners will, will understand this or get this is today they'll send the vehicle out to a dealer or whoever else to get a mm-hmm. calibration and they're getting back an invoice that says calibration. Yes. It doesn't say what was done. There's no right. images of where the targets were. There's no time and date stamp of who did what. So we're trying to solve that problem. We're really yes. trying to solve that problem. Yeah. I love that. There's no communication typically, especially with the dealership. You just get back your, your RO and you get the check invoice. mark. Here Great. It is. <laughs> yeah. Here it is. Okay. (laughs) I love it. I love it. Great technology, Frank. Now, quick question for you. How much does something, I know you have something else that we're going to talk about as well, but how much do these things cost? Because I would think, you know, the technology itself initially is so expensive that oftentimes it prices us, prices us out, but then can you afford not to have it? Well, I, you know, again, this is my personal subjective opinion, right? But <laughs> I, I, I don't know, and I'm still amazed at the, the large number of repairs, as well as insurers, by the way, that that look at a test drive as this, well, it's only a test drive. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, I'm really amazed. But right. so what we did from a pricing perspective, I'll start with test drive Copilot. Okay. I wanted to price it at a point to where no one could argue that it wasn't worth the money. So Mm -hmm. we initially priced test drive Copilot at $99 a month, period. Wow. And and so if you start to think about that, that's less than, that's about the same price as a cup of a Starbucks coffee every day. Yeah. And so we wanted to price it to where the shops couldn't say, well, that's too much money. So so test drive, $99 a month um, per location, unlimited number of test drives, unlimited number of users, um, in, in the shop. Very affordable. And, and it comes with two terabytes of storage for the audio, for the video, for the reporting. So we give them plenty of storage as well. That, it, that equates to about, I think, 3,500 test drives, the wow. two terabytes. Wow. So they, plenty of storage for them. And then once they're done with it, can they take that information and go store it on their own personal server or something like that? Just Great question. Liability purposes. Great question. The answer is yes. Okay. Um, you know, all my years with Sika and talking about data ownership going back to the early 90s, our belief is the shop owns the data. Yeah. Um, and so they can at any time go into the portal and download it. And if they want to save more space, they can download it and delete it off the portal. So right. yes, absolutely. Right. Okay. Perfect. So very, very affordable. There's really no reason why a shop shouldn't. That's, that's usually my, that's usually my comment. It's like, I'm not going to argue with you about price. It's it's $99 a month. Right. Um, I know you've got a part somewhere in your shop that you forgot to return that costs more than $99. Exactly. Exactly. (laughs) You know, and then calibration co-pilot, uh, the model is a little different. So, so in calibration co-pilot, if I'm a calibration provider, Mm -hmm. the the, the cost for them today is $199 a month. Okay for them, for their calibration center or their mobile business. Okay. And then for each customer that they service Mm -hmm. through the platform today, the price is $59 a month. Wow. So, so, and people ask, well, why'd you put the mile together that way? And I said, well, because if you're, if you're only doing calibrations for your mobile business, then we're not going to charge you. But if you're Mm -hmm. doing, if you're doing calibration for other businesses, at $59 a month, if you're not doing enough calibrations to get a 10X return, then you're probably not doing enough calibrations for that business. Right. Well, I love that pricing model. So that pricing model, then the person doing the calibration is the one paying for it. So let's say, you know, I have my shop and I'm using Joe Schmo's mobile calibration system. They're actually paying for the software and I, as the shop, don't need to pay then because Correct. my provider is paying for it. Correct. And if you start to think about the way business is done, I mean, if I'm, I'm the provider and I'm giving Mickey's Auto Body this, this platform, now you've got this seamless platform and you, th- you start to think about customer retention. Mm. You know, where's mm-hmm. it? Am I, if, if Mickey's now working with me through the platform, am I really going to go somewhere else where I'm getting, I'm getting multiple different documents via email, via whatever? So it, it's a true. longer term retention play as well. 
for sure. Yeah. For these providers, that's an incredible right. relationship tool to keep them connected, especially as more calibration companies come on the scene. Cause they want a piece of the pie. You want to make sure you solidify that relationship with your shops. If you're a provider. Correct. And, and then we looked at it too, in the longer term, we believe that there's going to be, well, for example, you already have it in terms of your, your large consolidators like Calver or, or Gerber. We looked at it from a design perspective and said, if I'm running multiple calibration centers, I need to be able to look at my company as a whole. I also need to be able to look at my company by region mm. or, by, or by city or by state. So the design of the platform is really designed also to be able to handle nationwide uh, calibration providers or franchisors. Because I also believe you're going to see you're going to see people get into the, the, the calibration business and they're probably going to franchise some of those businesses. As well. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, that's coming. <laughs> yep. That's coming. But this is a great solution for both sides. You know, that, oh, absolutely. I, that's why I love so. it. We believe so anyway. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we believe so. I love it. Now, are that has that been rolled out? Are you actually utilizing that? And that's live now? That is live in about a dozen uh, calibration centers today. Okay. And and the feedback, as I said earlier, tremendously positive. Awesome. Um, and so we're probably going to release it commercial mm -hmm. um, within the next 60, 30 to 60 days okay. to the market. But we're not... Today, you can't buy that because we're not really offering it uh, any pricing on, on the web or anything. Okay. So that is to come. So that will we can be, all again, stay tuned. 30 to 60 days, but the pricing will be remain the same when we launch it uh, commercially. That's so exciting. That's so exciting. Well, you know, you have a good concept when you roll it out and you get the feedback and you know, you by the feedback, you, you really need to, it's, it's, it's. Remember, calibrations is new, right? And yeah. so you really need to, number one, the people who are using it, they're getting into the business for the first time, right? Right. And so they're trying to figure out, well, what, what should I do to do this? So part yes. of what we're end up doing is we're helping them implement a business <laughs> workflow, yeah. not just software, which right. is fun. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, that's incredible. Well, and it's a tool, it's neat to be a part, you know, on my side, helping to grow businesses and whatever. It's so cool. Now you're participating. That is you're helping these guys come in and do a much needed job. We need these guys to come in and do calibrations. We need them to do it properly. So if you can help them get set up and create a platform that allows them to streamline everything for the safety of the customer going in the car at the end of the day, I would imagine that's very personally fulfilling for you. Uh, I I think, and, I, and it is, Mickey, but I, our industry today, I believe, still doesn't grasp the importance of ADAS. I mean, if, if you start to think about it, if ADAS doesn't work, it could be a life and death situation. Yeah. Right? Exactly. And so I look, at, I look at everything we're doing with test drive, with calibration, and then our, new, our latest product, ADAS Copilot, is really about making sure that the repairer properly repairs the vehicle mm. and it operates as designed before they give it back to the customer. Right. So ADAS Copilot is the one that's out that yep. anybody can buy right now. No, ADAS Copilot is not, it's not commercial yet. We're not selling okay. it. Okay. It's, in about, it's in about 70 collision centers okay. uh, across North America. Okay. And, and the idea there is, is, is sort of the first step in the process, right? So we talked about the last step being test drive co-pilot. Yes. We talked about the calibration step, which yes. is pre-test drive. This really, this, pro this product is designed for the initial process. So customer vehicle comes into the facility. And as you well know, Mickey, the ADAS technology doesn't just jump out at, and tell you where it's at, right? Yes. I mean, yeah, you can look in the windshield and you can see the camera, in some cases, you might see the little little things on the bumper, but to quickly identify ADAS on a vehicle, it's, there really isn't much out there today. So, so no. we wanted to solve the problem to help the shops write a proper detailed repair plan, including ADAS. So our ADAS Copilot platform, simply you scan the VIN mm -hmm. and it pr provides for that user all the ADAS technologies and the telematics technologies on that vehicle. Wow. 
That is incredible. That is one of my biggest pet peeves that nothing <laughs> has come out with this information. And then you hear everybody saying, well, you just, you look at the owner's manual and that's how you can identify what's on the car. And it's like, are you freaking kidding me? So we all have to go do some, you know, be some detectives and sleuth each vehicle to try to figure it out and hope to God you don't miss something. I mean, come on. Well, you know, there, now there are processes in place that help, but do not provide everything. So for example, if the shop is doing a pre-scan, for example, mm -hmm. and if they're using the appropriate tool for a pre-scan, in some cases, they can identify, again, in some only, they can identify the ADAS technologies on a vehicle, okay? But not across the board. Now remember, there's right. 20 plus different ADAS systems uh, on the market today, plus depending on the options that mm -hmm. people that people bought in the vehicle, you don't know what they bought, particularly yeah. the European vehicles are even more complicated. Anyway, so point is scan the VIN in the matter of seconds, you know the technology that's available on the vehicle. And then what we do then is we allow them to do what I'll call a visual inspection mm -hmm. of the ADAS. And so they can they can look at the ABAS. By the way, we also give them guidelines to where to look. Okay. So we, we tell them, you know, your your blind spot is typically going to be here. Your um, awesome. Your your cross traffic alert is going to be here. Yeah. But anyway, so then they walk around the car doing a visual inspection, and if they see an area in the vehicle that needs to be R and R or R and I'd, they mm -hmm. would select it. Okay. And then we prompt them to say, well. ADAS components that are R and R, R and I need a calibration. Go to your OE procedures to validate what calibration requirements you need. Mm. I love it. I and love so it. then, and, when and that's done, all on the phone. Make, pardon me. And that's all on the phone or on an iPad or something. All on a smartphone, either Android Perfect. or Apple. By the way, Mickey, all three platforms yes utilize the combination of smartphones and software. Awesome. Over the last 30 days, we said, well, number one, with ADAS Copilot, we're helping the shop estimate ADAS related, uh, ADAS -related repairs. Mm -hmm. With Calibration Copilot, we're helping them calibrate um, mm -hmm. the vehicle. And then with Test Drive, we're helping them validate. So mm -hmm. our new mission is to help the industry estimate, calibrate, and validate ADAS repairs. I love it. I love that you have the full suite from beginning to end. Uh, you know, it's helpful. The, each piece is helpful on its own, but it's most powerful the fact that you cover the whole array of the process because that they are the all different pieces. That was the goal. I mean, again, we started at the end step first. <laughs> yes. But now I don't, I, again, I don't think there's another platform in the market that offers the front to back and middle solution like we do. I haven't found any yet. And I'm sure with the testing that you're doing, you will know that this is a, you're going to know it's a quality product. So by the time it goes commercial and people can buy it, you're good. You've tested it. You haven't just rolled it out and like, Hey, here it is everybody. And you haven't done testing. You haven't, you haven't gotten all the kinks out and granted, I'm sure it's an evolution to keep dialing it in. So by the time it's available for people listening on this podcast, by the time we see Frank on LinkedIn going, it's here, it's, <laughs> buy it now. We're going to know he's tried it out. This thing's good to go. Let's roll with it. Yeah. But, but being in software for so many years, software always has bugs. I don't care of course, how yeah. much testing you do. Right. Yes. And, and the other thing I always say is software is like a painting that's never done. Right, right. Right. So, so they'll all improve. Yes. But, but you're right. I mean, we're trying to test number one, the validate that, that it's accurate, right? It works. Um, there's, there's value in it mm -hmm. and making sure that, you know, when you release it to the market, you have the least amount of bugs that you yeah. think you've got. Right. Right. So we can tell from our smartphones that are updating constantly, they always are needing something new. There's it's always evolving. Technology is constantly Correct. evolving. And as these systems evolve, you're going to have to be going in and adjusting the software on the phones and whatnot to be keeping up with it. But that's the joy of being the shop and being able to pay for the system is that's for you guys. <laughs> you all can handle that. 
because we just need to do our job and drive, you know, we need to do the test drive co-pilot and we just need to worry about driving it or, you know, whatever it is, you guys handle the heavy lifting of getting all the documentation and installing that into the system where right now the shop feels like they need to handle all of it. And it's mind boggling really. Yeah. I mean, just take test drive co-pilot, for example, every, every month we go in and we look because we the data we get from test drive copilot is from OEM repair procedures, OEM websites, OEM YouTube channels, all data others. And what we do is we look for new OEM repair uh, test drive procedures to add them to the system as well as new videos. So yes. we do that every month. Yeah. Well, you I would imagine you'd have to. And as new vehicles get released, all of a sudden now there's Oh, good. Now there's a, yeah. now there's more technology, and it, I mean it's it's never ending, and it, and it seems like we just keep going faster and faster. Correct. So, very. So you, the you have a, moving very fast. <laughs> yeah, which makes your job the tough one because <laughs> you've got to stay on top of it so that we can all lean on your software to be able to do our jobs. Because, and I say our as a shop previous shop owner we are so inundated with just trying to fix the vehicle properly based off of all of these specifications that have to be followed. And when it comes to then ADAS, which is new and seems so overwhelming to be able to just have something fairly simple that we can turn to that does the heavy lifting, that if I still owned my shop, I'd be all over it. <laughs> that would be oh, one, yeah. uh, one less hat it. to wear. And we love it. This is such great information. It's exciting information that we've got some usable, practical tools coming down the pipeline for us in a place where I think I speak for most all shop owners and managers. It's feeling very overwhelming. There's a lot of information and it's like drinking from a fire hose. Like, what do I even do with all this? And absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> So I applaud you for seeing the problem and creating a solution. And that's, that's what we need, right? That's, that's, what, what, that's what we try to do I mean, <laughs> throughout, throughout my career. You know, if you, if you, if you listen, if you listen and you hear the same thing over and over again, it tells me a, it's a problem mm -hmm. and then B it's an opportunity. That's now, right. you know, the opportunity is, you know, develop something to solve the problem. And that's what I've done yeah. my entire career. My yeah. Entire career. Well, and you are notorious for being a problem solver and a fun and funny guy. So kudos to you for having such a good attitude while doing it all. Well, thanks. <laughs> it's fun. We, I mean, it's fun. Yeah, it, it is fun. And it is an opportunity. And it's always a joy to be a problem solver for people that are struggling. And that's what we've got here. You know, a group of people that are struggling right now. And, you know, if we can help them at all, that's, that's the ultimate goal. That's, that's what I've done. Yeah. It's the mid eighties trying to help the shop. <laughs> so let me just recap real quick. The test drive co-pilot is available right now. You can, right. you can go buy it. So I'm going to put a link down in the description where people can go and purchase that and get that going for their shop immediately. Then we've got the calibration co-pilot, which is coming up. And that will, but, but the shops, if there's people who want to use it, they can reach out to me and we're putting it into as many facilities as we possibly can right now. Okay. And we're not charging anybody for it. Okay. So if you're listening and you want to give it a go, contact Frank and Frank's information is in the description as well. And, and the same thing with ADAS Pop. Uh -huh. We're putting it, we've got, like I said, we've got it in 70 locations today and the more the merrier. Yes. Because the more people who use it, the more feedback we That's get. That's right. Right. And, yes. and so, it, again, even though we're not selling it today, yes. Anybody who wants to use it, love to awesome. have them. Okay. So, calibration co pilot and ADAS co pilot, reach out to Frank, try it, use it, give him your feedback so he can get it totally dialed in before he goes to market. And for those that aren't up for that and want to wait, we've got about. 60, 60 days, 90 days, 60 days, 60 yeah. days. So by that time, most of the country will be vaccinated as well. I hope <laughs> <laughs> we can actually go see each other in person again. Yeah. Imagine that. Yes. 
Wow. Well, I appreciate you, Frank, for coming on. I've, I've known you now for a long time. I've seen your progression and all the different software and technology you've come up with over the years. And as a person in the auto body industry, I appreciate all you've done for us, all the hard work, your passion for what you do. Like I said, you've got a smile on your face. You love what you do and it helps all of us well, all, all of my shops, cause I don't own one anymore, even though I still think of myself as a shop owner, you know, you are there to help us to bridge those gaps, to create the solutions and just honestly appreciate you. You're, you're just you a so good much. dude. And I so appreciate Thank you, you so much, Mickey. Truly appreciate it. <laughs> well, thanks everybody for listening. If you need any information about today's podcast, all the information is down in the description and we'll see you on the next episode of body banging. Thanks Mickey. Thanks. <laughs> If you enjoyed today's show, make sure you hit the subscribe button. We have some incredible topics and guests coming your way you will not want to miss. If you are watching on YouTube and don't want to miss the latest and greatest, you'll want to hit the bell after subscribing so you will get a pop-up each time a video podcast goes live. To our devoted fans, would you mind paying it forward and sharing this little gem with someone else you think may benefit from it? Much love from all of us here at Body Bangin', all things Autobody.